Guys, I saw it. It's alive. It's huge. Look at it. Look at it. It's humongous. I can't, I can't believe it. It's alive. It's huge. It's so big. Look at it. It's clearly, clearly alive and huge. It's so huge and alive. Ten Cloverfield Lane stars Mary Elizabeth Weinstead as a girl who wakes up in an underground bomb shelter. She discovers she's been taken there by John Goodman, who claims that there is no way they can leave because the air outside is not breathable. So we have this guy keeping this girl captive, or is he actually helping her? Is there really a problem outside? Can the air be breathed? Or is this guy just insane? Either way, this girl has to figure out what's going on. So I'm kind of a gigantic Cloverfield fan. I feel like I'm one of the only people that genuinely loved that first film. I actually don't have much of a visual memory for seeing Transformers in theaters, and that's because the thing I remember most about that night was that crazy trailer for Cloverfield that blew everyone away, got people talking, and the brilliant viral marketing campaign afterwards that I was hooked on. I remember those days, the heydays of the Cloverfield IMDb message boards. Tons of fun. That film was made in secret, and they somehow did it again. I personally wouldn't call this film a sequel. In fact, I think it would be a mistake to go into this film expecting a sequel. This is a confined, claustrophobic, tension-filled thriller. That's what this movie is. And if you go into this movie knowing that, I think you're gonna love it, because I kinda did. In fact, as soon as it was over, I wanted to see it again instantaneously. So let's talk about the pros of this movie, because there are some cons, and I'll get into those towards the end of this review. Pros, man, Dan Trachtenberg as a director. Hats off to you, man. This is your first feature film, and I can't wait to see what else you do. This film was filled with tension and suspense. This film, there is definitely a vibe throughout the majority of it where you're thinking to yourself, this is all completely realistic and tangible. I could easily see some guy going absolutely batshit insane and chaining a woman and a man up in a basement somewhere because he's positive that something else is up there that we have to stay away from. Which leads me to my next favorite thing about this film, and that is John Goodman. This guy is a class act. He is one of the best character actors alive, hands down. And the reason his performance is so good in this movie is because we as the viewer are unable to figure out exactly what's going on in his mind. The movie toys with us so excellently, and it's a great example of misdirection. We never really know, is he really insane? Or is he on the level? In one scene, he may appear subtly crazy, but in the next, he's completely rational. You never fully know what's going on in his head, which makes our hero, played by Mary Elizabeth Weinstead, constantly on edge, and she gave the best performance I've ever seen from her. And one of the things that I adored about her character is that she's not an idiot. She's really smart, she's really clever. Usually in horror thrillers like this, you're screaming at the screen, you're dumb, why are you doing that? Stop, don't go in there, don't go over there, just pick up that thing, do the thing that we know you should do but you're not doing. Not in this film, she is ahead of the audience. The film wisely presents small clues in just brief shots or perhaps a small line of dialogue, a book on a shelf, maybe someone's former profession, and you start to connect things and you realize Oh shit, as does our main hero. She's terrific. I loved her as a protagonist. She was a lot of fun to root for, and you can actually root for her because she's smart. The other guy that's trapped down there is played by John Gallagher Jr., who gives a really good performance. They did attempt to give him a backstory in one scene to kind of flesh him out, but he is unfortunately that character that doesn't get the attention the other two characters do, and so he's not very compelling. The film is really about Mary Elizabeth Weinstead and John Goodman, and these two facing off, and what really is going on there, because we don't really know, and that's one of the things I loved about this movie is the fact that you walk into it not knowing anything, thank goodness. Now, in such a small and confined location, your average director might have a hard time coming up with new ways to make each scene interesting. Not the case here. There's always something to be concerned about. There's always a new direction to every scene in which you feel on edge. And that is awesome because you really are very limited in this film and what you could actually do, at least for the majority of it. Now, I do have some cons, and one of them is that I'm not entirely sure the use of the Cloverfield name in the title was warranted because there isn't much to connect it. In fact, there's really only one line in the entire film that I could sense that there was some connection. It's not necessarily a spoiler for this movie, but it is a spoiler if I explain it 
for the last film. So after I give my grade for this movie, I am going to discuss this one line, and if you don't want any spoilers at all, even the most mild one for this film, it does however spoil the first. I'll wait until after I give my grade. So what I'm saying is that some fans may go to this movie disappointed because the Cloverfield monster doesn't really have anything to do with this movie. It's just a movie about captivity, and it works brilliantly. I mean, it's a great thriller. I loved this movie, and I want to see it again right now. But some people who want to see a raging monster or something along those lines could be disappointed with this movie. Also, there is a third act reveal that I, of course, will not ruin for you, and it did feel rushed. It does come up very fast, and it sort of leaves you going like, whoa, like that was just really abrupt. And it worked for me, after some thought, while I was watching it, I was like, I don't know about this. But I sat down, I took a lot of notes, and I thought about the movie, and I thought about things that were said previously in the movie. I thought about sounds that I heard previously in the film. I thought about small hints that were given by certain characters in the film. And I realized that it might be a first viewing problem. One of those things where when you see the movie for the first time, you don't know what to expect, and then you see what the film is building to, and it's sort of like you have to process it. You really have to think about it. And after thought, I appreciated it even more. And that is the only issue I have with J.J. Abrams' marketing. I love the fact that you never know anything, but it always creates an expectation, and that expectation can sometimes make you really dislike a film because you create these godlike, heavenly expectations in your head because you really don't know what his films are about, or films that his production company are involved in, his mystery box as he calls it. It's a brilliant marketing technique, but sometimes when you see the film you're like, oh, well that wasn't exactly what I expected. Don't go into this movie with any expectations. Expect a fun thriller that is actually very scary on a human level, very small, which is a huge plus because usually sequels or prequels or reboots within a franchise think, well, we have to make it huge this time because the last one was this big. This film does the exact opposite, makes it smaller, and in that way, I loved 10 Cloverfield Lane, and I cannot wait to see it again. I'm going to give this film an A. Will some people go to this movie expecting a certain film, not get it, and say it's horrible? Yes. Don't go into this film expecting Cloverfield 2. Expect a thriller, and you will get one. So like I said, mild, mild spoiler for this film. Heavy spoiler for the first Cloverfield. So if you've never seen the first Cloverfield, just, you know, I'm about to say some shit here. <laughs> the final shot of the first Cloverfield, which by the way, I watched last night and still love, Far in the background, you see the ocean, and you see a small little dot falling from the sky, landing in the ocean. A lot of people got really excited when this was discovered back in 2008, because it's extremely easy to miss. This is a satellite. Now, apparently that satellite is what disturbed the Cloverfield monster from its sleep in the ocean. That's like the big Easter egg of the first Cloverfield movie, and apparently the reason the Cloverfield monster arose from the ocean, that satellite. In this new film, John Goodman mentions that his previous profession involved working with satellites. That's the only connection I can find. Which is very minor, and it might not even be a connection, but I do find it very coincidental. And it has to mean something, because rarely is anything ever put in a J.J. Abrams production that specific if it doesn't mean something. Guys, those are my thoughts on this film. Do check it out. I do think it's worth your time. I appreciated the effort these filmmakers made. Also, I just want to thank everyone who bought my book. I'm seriously just blown away. You guys are amazing, and I owe you so much thanks. I do want to mention, in case for some who perhaps are in a different country who are not able to get the book, the ebook is currently available on Amazon. So that's cool for you guys if you still want to read it in some way on the internet. And just thank you so much for buying that. It really means the world to me. It was a dream come true. Please stay tuned this Sunday because my friend John Flickinger, a.k.a. The Flick Pick, and I are about to ravage Superman 4, The Quest for Peace. You guys are the best. Thank you so much, as always, for watching. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.